Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is John Noroy, and I'm your moderator for today. Um, we will be uh, talking about um, the subject of, um, I don't have it in front of me, I apologize, the subject of academic success for all students, uh, tools for doing that. But before we get to the meat of the webinar, let me just tell you about the slide that's up in front of you. There's a toll-free number to use if you're having a problem, also the long-distance long version. But note the red uh, number at the bottom of the screen. If you call in for help during this webinar, you'll need that uh, reference number so that someone can help you with any problems that you're having. And as I said quite um, a, a moment or two ago, our topic for today is tools for the academic success of all students. If you're tweeting, we'd like you to use hashtag NASSP webinar, and we'd like you to know that you can follow us on Facebook, and there's our website. In about 48 hours, this PowerPoint and recording will be on the NASSP website. So anyone who's with us today, who's saying to him or herself, I want a copy of that PowerPoint or I want to go back and hear that again, you'll have access to that and an opportunity to do that after the webinar has completed. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. First, we have Gina O'Hare, who's from Charlotte, North Carolina, works in the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District. Welcome, Gina. Uh, she has a record of turning around underperforming schools. In 2014, she was named principal of Palisades Park Elementary School, the first district's, excuse me, the district's first elementary STEM school. The school has since been recognized for making high growth on North Carolina's end of grade test and for being a magnet school of excellence by Magnet Schools of America. Cheryl Franklin, who's also with us, has served in education for over 20 years and has appoint, has, was appointed to the principalship of Robert R. Gray Elementary School in 2008, where she's currently in her 10th year as principal. She has served diligently in both the District of Columbia Public Schools and currently with the Prince George's County Public Schools as a classroom teacher, reading resource teacher, testing coordinator, assistant principal, and jack of all trades. You probably all saw in the none the other day with the chainsaw clearing debris after the hurricane. We know that all principals do all things that need to be done in the school. Jana Freeler is the owner of JLF Consulting. She's a retired high school administrator and has previously been president of NASSP. She works now as a professional development faculty member for NASSP. So welcome to all three of you. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here, rather. And I'm going to turn the program over to the three of you. And uh, when you're ready to go advance the slides, please just tell me. Jana, are you be okay. ready to begin? I am. Thank you. So you can go um, one more slide, John. Go to slide six. So um, what we're doing today is we're going to talk to you about a, an endeavor that we um, undertook as part of a cooperation or a joint effort between the Wallace Foundation, NAESP, and NASSP. And we worked um, together as part of a principal C PLC, which is part of the principal pipeline initiative for the Wallace Foundation. And our work um, that you will hear about today is centered around the Wallace Foundation's five key practices for effective leadership. And those are listed for you on your screen. But the tool that you are going to hear about today specifically relates to that first one. This group created tools for shaping a vision of academic success for all students. Okay, John, you can go to the next slide. So the next slide talks to us about how we did this. And we used a process called design thinking methodology to do this. And you can see the stages listed for you in this slide. Um, the group went through a stage of empathy where they considered lots of different um, perspectives when they were developing a problem of practice. But the key to the empathy stage is that you design a tool from the user's perspective, not, what, not what's most convenient for the designer. They really honed their skills by working through the divine stage, making sure that they understand the needs of the users and what it was that they wanted to use to make an impact. 
then the group used their collective wisdom through the ideate stage by really focusing and trying to um, generate multiple ideas for how to solve the problem that they identified. Then they went into the prototype stage. They did, they went into, they developed tools, different tools that might be used for this. And then they went to the test phase. So this group has had this um, tool that you're going to see tested multiple times. Now what I will tell you is that this technically is considered a prototype. It is not a finished tool. However, when you hear the other participants speak about their tool, there are active links. What you can do is take what is in the prototype and adapt it to fit your needs. Okay, John, next slide, and I'm going to turn it over to Gina and Cheryl. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure we're on the right slide. So I think we're looking at the one that talks about the resources and the tools. Yes. All right. So what we did after the when we went through the design process, and Cheryl can probably talk about this as well, with the question that we were giving on how to use your instructional team to you know improve student um, success, academic success, we you know, started creating a list of, you know, what all does a principal or leadership team need in order to make, you know, um, the leadership team effective and so that you can improve student achievement. And as you can imagine, we must have had uh, about 500 sticky notes. So what we did then is tried to condense and it ended up going into about four different buckets that we found um, a leader needed and the resources that that they need in order to really move a school and make improvements. So um, one of the things that I'd like to also just add in um, to what you're saying, Gina, is that there was a, a lot of discussion that took place, um, as you said, around exactly what were some of those big rocks that we felt that principals really needed to have in order to be equipped with to serve their populations and their stakeholders effectively. Um, and as we see that's displayed on the screen now, that building structure and systems, distributed leadership, innovation, and opportunities to reflect and adjust. And I don't know if you would agree, Gina, but I think we spent a lot of time on the first two um, because whether you are a novice principal, um, a seasoned principal, perhaps you're at a central office or a district leader, um, one of the foundational um, elements to a successful school or school district is taking time to build those structures and systems. So we certainly felt that that was an important element for anyone who's in the field of education. And then understanding that leaders cannot do it alone. And so we also felt that that distributed leadership piece was also um, a necessary component as it related to building that leadership team dashboard. I would definitely agree with that, Cheryl. We went on to say that effective leaders don't just do the status quo, that they definitely try to find new strategies and innovative ways to, you know, help their teachers move kids. And that, you know, throughout the year we are collecting data. So what do you do with that? You have to monitor it, but then you also have to make adjustments according to that. So reflecting and adjusting your program are very important. So after we all met, we came up with these four categories, and at that point, we, each of us um, who work in different school districts, we went back to our school districts, met with the principals and assistant principals in our school districts, and kind of got feedback from them on what kinds of things would you like to see in this toolkit as we develop it. So that was the next phase. One of the things I'm wondering if we could possibly go back a slide when we think about or consider the design thinking methodology process, because as we're talking about it, it almost sounds easy, right? But this was a two-year process for us. And so looking at those five steps in the design thinking um, process, we spent a lot of time 
in each of those areas. And once we got to the point, as Gina just shared, where we felt we had a quality product, and then we had to roll it out, like you said, at our, our individual districts. And so that was such a vulnerable stage for, for us because we spent so much time and energy creating something that we felt was an excellent product. And then we pushed it out there. And so one of the things I'd like to just um, surface here is that even when you're creating a product, the testing component is a part of the process. And so as you put a product out there, it's important to understand that that particular phase is designed to generate um, additional thoughts to help you think more deeply about a product, to give you opportunities um, for improvement, um, or to just make some shifts. And so as we took the product back to our individual districts, I think that the tools did just that and allowed us to come back and to have stronger conversations as, as a team. Cheryl, is this the right slide that you were just talking about, or shall I pull another one up? Um, let's see. It may be right after that. Right there? I think it was before that one. It, it was um, about four or five circles. Circles. I'm um, going back. There. No, here it is. Here, there we go. There it is. There okay. it is. Exactly. So that, if you look at the ID8 portion, like we spent a lot of time there. That brainstorming piece um, was huge for us because, again, we all came from different districts, and so bringing your individual experiences um, to the table and then really advocating, you know, for yourself as a practicing principal to say, this is what I really believe should be um, involved in this process. And again, as you go through that stage and then you begin to create a prototype, and feel really great about this thing that you have created, and then you push it out there to test. Taking that back to your districts again, or just taking it to the audience that you have designed the tool for, um, should allow you an opportunity to be open for um, constructive criticism, um, to make improvements, and or to make some shifts. And so having those individual opportunities to do that allow us to come back and to make some adjustments um, to our product and allowed us just to make a stronger leadership team dashboard for individuals who are at various levels of the educational process. And while there's a, a brief pause, I'll just uh, remind the audience, please feel free to put questions into the question box, and we'll come to them at the end of the, uh, the broadcast and answer your questions as best we can. So where do you want me to go next, ladies? Next so we slide. can go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, once we developed the, the four different categories, what we then started doing is uh, going out and taking different information from our districts and through research and started to put you know, critical pieces into each one of the categories. And what we wanted to show everyone about our toolkit is that you know, there's really not one place to start or finish that it is cyclical. Because no matter where you are, you know, um, what school you're at or what point, whether you're early on in your career or whether you've uh, been at a school 20 years, you know, we all can see changes might happen in student enrollment or with, you know, your teaching staff. Wherever you might be in that building, you could get changed to a, another school, which happened to one of our uh, colleagues who actually said, um, you know, he was at a school for 10 years and then he was asked to be moved to a low performing school and he said you know I, I actually used the tools myself because it was like starting back ground zero when I got into this building because a lot of the procedures and things that we had in place at the school I'd been in weren't you know in place at the school I was at so I was able to use a lot of these tools so it's really for you know new leaders experienced leaders um, in whatever you know school that they are in I would agree. We also and and individuals. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, Cheryl. I think you were getting ready to pick up on the school district. Right. So I was also going to say for those um, individuals who are not school based but may be supporting um, principals, that this would serve as a one stop shop. Um, to allow those individuals to pull various tools for wherever that principal is in his or her principalship. 
Excuse me, this is I John wanted... again. I, I have to say this because I'm getting messages. Um, there was some kind of a glitch and some people couldn't see the screen and I think now everybody can, but if you still can't see the screen, please put it, put that into the question box. Go ahead, Cheryl and Jean. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Well, one of the pieces we were also going to pick up on was that third think about that we understand that because of our varied experiences that um, certain items may not speak to you, but we would love for this to be an element where school districts will begin to deposit things that they have found have worked really well in their individual districts um, and allow that information to be used nationwide. And then we also would encourage school districts to replicate the dashboard based upon their own individual needs and, again, adding those resources and tools that would be more specific to their work in um, the district. Very good. I think so I next slide. So, what we did is we took this out to our districts and for example I did a presentation to assistant principals and um, rolled this out to them to get them some feedback and to also introduce some of the tools for you know when they were ready to take over a school or in their current role if they were on the school leadership team and so this slide just shows some of the different things that are in the toolkit next slide and so now, Cheryl, I think we can uh, show them the toolkit. What do you think? I absolutely think so. So because it is a prototype, we still have it in Google right now. And as it you know, becomes more and more meatier with resources, we are hoping to get this in a little bit more um, I don't know, flashy? What's the word, Cheryl? <laughs> Absolutely. We would love for somebody who has a background in IT or web design <laughs> to help us design a platform that, as you said, is just flashy and just catchy or visually appealing. But for now, right. this is what we were able to come up with, and it, and it does work. So we'd love to kind of dip into the leadership dashboard at this time. Right, and so that might be... Like this is the first page of it. I don't see it might be on a different tab. Down at the bottom, John, where it says leadership dashboard leadership. master. Mm -hmm. Master. There we go. Right. Okay. So on this particular tab, we see those same um main categories that were on that um initial page. And so you see that the resources are broken down, again, by the building structures and systems, distributed leadership, innovation, reflecting and adjusting. And then one of the things that we also noted was that even though we have a main category, there are subcategories as well under each. And so you'll see that second column um, has um, information broken out that just kind of digs more deeply into that overall larger category. And then from there, you would begin to funnel down into tools and resources that might be more specific to your work. So, Gina, is there a particular um, resource you'd like to to go into, or I can start us off with the first one: building structures and okay. systems. Great. So, and we can just show a, a couple of these, um, and I think you have to kind of hover over the written words where it's the um, actual link. If you hover that over that, you can open it. But I'll just talk a little bit about the resources that are in that category. There's The first one has to do with a, a high school leadership team and all about the three types of leadership that um, the author feels like a, a successful high school should have, and that's creating department chairs, um, creating an effective admin team, and also a school improvement or innovation team. So it, it includes checklists and action steps for a high school administrator. But is that is in want? the, yeah, that's the first tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Right. So folks, when they get the PowerPoint, will be able to access this tool because the links are embedded, okay? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another tool that is in building structures and systems is all about quality instructional focus and so that might be uh, you, you'll find information there on how do we how does our leadership team define 
quality instruction. You know, what does it look like? Let, let's all be on the same page. How can our team promote quality instruction? How can we keep our school on track and what would the next steps be as we look at improving instruction? So that's another tool that we have. Also within that particular category, ASCD has a, a great article in there on developing a vision and mission statement. It's um, a lot of, in, in that one, a lot of different um, activities and checklists to go through to help you make sure that your vision is aligned with all of the stakeholders. The last resource that I'll talk about in there is all about focusing um, a team. So within your leadership team, there's a team assessment. So, you know, how does your team get along together? Are there certain areas that you need to work on? There's a goal setting uh, link in there. There's a link for work culture. There's also one for giving and receiving difficult feedback. And so there's 17 different things you can click on there that have to do with creating a highly effective team. So that was the first category. You want me to open any of those? Sure, yeah. Let's try this first one and see if it'll open quickly. It's not opening for me right now. Okay. All right. Well, the good news is they can access this right. via the handout through the link. Right. So I will oh, turn I it over to, to, to Cheryl. Is there a, sure. a category you'd like to talk about? Definitely. So I'm very interested in distributed leadership because, as I said before, you know, even though we believe we can do it all, we learn very quickly that we do have to distribute some of the responsibilities of what we do to other individuals within the building. And we also want to begin to develop teacher leaders. And so we, we usually find that we have individuals who are willing to do the work but may not be ready for a specific assignment. So what I'd like to do under distributed leadership is the second um, item, second link there for identifying leaders. If we could click on that. It's thinking. Okay. I believe that is a strength finders um, link. And again, the the thought behind this is giving um, school leaders tools to be able to look at your staff and determine which individuals really do possess the skills necessary to engage in specific work in your school building. If that one does not open, Perhaps we can go down to the link that says identify teacher leaders. There we go. Great. And so again, this particular article talks about a new way to identify teacher leaders in the building. And so it's almost a checklist in an article, something that I think is a very quick and easy read for building administrators, thinking about who's trusted, um, who is knowledgeable, who has strong technological um, experience. Just some of the things that we want to think about as we're thinking about who we're going to tap for some of the work that takes place within our building. And I'll just say to folks that uh, some of these links that aren't opening for me, uh, I think it's because we're doing this through GoToWebinar and uh, they did work before, so these should all work for you when we get you the PowerPoint uh, when you come, come to look through this yourself later on. One of the other things that we tried to do was to also pull in resources from NASSP. We found that um, the organization has a lot of rich resources and we wanted to embed some of those resources into the toolkit so that um, building level administrators would be able to say, you know what, this organization really does have rich resources and allow individuals to continue to utilize the resources that are available through the organization. 
if we go back to the um, the master page there, mm -hmm. and I think I would like to go into innovation, unless you wanted to do that, Gina. No, go right ahead. Okay, so there was one there under inspiring teams, and so there comes a time in the school year where you know the newness wears off and we do have to figure out ways to help people reinvent themselves during the school year. And so again, just putting some things in there to help sustain a positive culture in the building and to help keep people motivated um, for the, the very important work that we do throughout the entire year. And we had a couple of TED Talk videos in there too, right? Yep. We did. So this, you want this audio to uh, be on. I, I want to make sure everybody knows that that was the introduction to this video. Shall we keep this playing, or are you going to talk talk over him? Well, again, and so I'm glad that we're actually showing this because you know some principals know what they want to do and how they want to push a particular um, assignment through in their building. However, they may not feel comfortable being the presenter. And so, you know, what we found was that TED Talks is an excellent resource that offers training where the principal may not have may not um, necessarily be the individual that has to be out front, but there is something that's already structured there. And then depending upon the school that you're in, you may have department chairs and those individuals may be responsible for pushing out um, some thoughts to their team. And so making sure everyone's on the same page Something like this could ensure that everyone throughout various departments is hearing the same information. Thanks. Sure. <clears throat> Any other links on this page that either of you would like to highlight for us? Are you done with innovation, so. Cheryl? I am. We can move into reflect and okay. adjust. Right. So reflect and adjust. Um, if you've been an administrator, um, e even teachers, we're all about taking a look at our data. And in this particular category, I could not get it to open, um, but there was a sample grade monitor, and that was really for high schools. It was a data tracker that had attendance on there, um, different classes, different uh, graduation um, components that that the kids had to reach and all that. I remember that being on there. Another piece that's in this section is guidelines for data walls and how to create a data wall for your school so that everyone can invest and that everyone's aware of where the kids are and where you need to go. So that was in Reflect and Adjust. And so that's, that's the toolkit right there. Absolutely, and we again are interested in just building uh, more resources, um, and so feedback is certainly critical because I think the people who use the toolkit are actually the best audience to go to in terms of what resources they would like to see in a dashboard such as this. Right, so I guess we can go to the next slide. So if you get into looking at the leadership dashboard and you think, well, you know, I'd like to roll this out to my leadership team or, you know, to assistant principals or present to your colleagues, this is just a little activity that you can use and it kind of gets them to look at each of the scenarios and then figure out, let me go to the toolkit and what resources could I pull to help me get through this situation. So that's why those are on there. We used that when we went back to train other leaders in our districts. Did you want to say anything on that, Cheryl? I agree with what, what you said. I was actually trying to reconnect. I'm, I'm losing the connection here, and so I'm kind of waiting okay. for, for everything to reconnect on my end. So this would be a good time for me to tell the audience that Cheryl is um, performing a first for us. She's the first presenter to do so from her car. <laughs> um, which we, we were chuckling about a bit. We've had folks from hotel rooms and hotel lobbies and restaurants <laughs> on webinars, and Cheryl's in her car today, so please bear with us. <laughs> next slide. Ready for the next slide, Don Gina? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So the next one is just problem of practice. So think about 
your own problem of practice in your current school around the area of academic success for all students. And as we just showed you the dashboard, just kind of reflect on what tools in that dashboard you could use to kind of jumpstart your work on making improvements. Absolutely. I think this would be a great time if individuals, you know, would kind of type in some of those things that they're thinking about, if they had any aha moments as we went through the dashboard and perhaps making connections um, around how they could possibly start using this today. Well, Cheryl, as you're saying, going through the dashboard, uh, Kimberly typed, she's not driving, right? So we want to make sure that uh, we, <laughs> we keep everybody folks. No, she's not driving. She's just in the car because it's dismissal time and the school is so noisy uh, with bells and things that she needed a quiet place. So, Absolutely. Uh, Thank put, you. You're welcome. Put your questions into the question box, please. The, they, they're eager uh, to answer your questions. Anybody who has anything about the uh, that the toolkit or the general presentation, please add them. Uh, ladies, are you ready for the next slide? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I think that was just kind of summing up once again what the categories were. Okay. And then just getting, so, like Cheryl had mentioned before, getting feedback on what resources would be useful to have in the dashboard. Absolutely. And um, I, I, first of all, I want to thank Gina and Cheryl for um, stepping us through this tool and for the work that both of you and your entire team did on creating this. The significance of this and the commitment of the Wallace Foundation and NASSP to create tools that are um, designed by practitioners for use by practitioners is to be commended because we really need that relevance piece in there when we're talking about what do we turn to. There's so much that we can look at, so many resources. Having it put into manageable categories and the resources in there is very helpful. So I want to thank you both and your team for that. And before I we let me, go ahead, Jenna. Go ahead. There are two questions that have come in, but I'll save them until you're finished with your question. Well, I would like to just hear from um, Gina and Cheryl. If you could both talk just a little bit. This process took you 18 months because you didn't work on it straight for 18 months. But talk just a little bit about how design thinking methodology maybe helped you arrive at some of the, how beneficial was that to help you organize your work and get to the product that you have here? So I think, you know, one of the things that I, I would like to bring out in terms of the design thinking process is that at the beginning, and I don't know if Gina would agree, it was, it was a little painful because we were coming from different backgrounds, different um, populations, um, different school levels. And so being able to pinpoint something that would be meaningful to everyone was quite a process. And yet, on the back end, we understand how incredibly important that process was. So having time to really grapple with, think through, um, post sticky notes, tear down sticky notes, all of that was incredibly essential to being able to move through the process. If we had not had an opportunity to have the time to think, to grapple, to ask questions, to hear the thinking of colleagues, I'm certain that we would not have gotten to a point where we were able to even create a prototype. Yeah, I would agree. There, there were probably, what, about 15 of us in the group, Cheryl? And, and I so, uh, you know, being leaders, you're used to you know, um, Leading. sharing your ideas. <laughs> and so there was a lot of negotiating going on. Um, the other part I liked was really taking it back to our districts and then being able to get feedback. Uh, we had everyone do a survey. Then we came back and that really helped us narrow down 
what we wanted to put in the toolkit. So it was a, a hard, laborious process, but I think in the end we, we've got a pretty good product. Absolutely. Well, here's the, here's the first question that came in. Someone is asking how to get access to the tool, and I've mentioned that it's embedded in the PowerPoint, and um, some we've had some problems with that today. So, is there any other way that people can get access to the tool if their PowerPoint uh, uh, won't let them get at it? Anna, is that a question for you? Uh, if you go directly to the NASSP website, nassp.org and you go to professional learning, there's a tab for professional learning, and you go to the section that is called online professional learning, and scroll about halfway down on that page, you will see all of the Wallace tools with all of the links listed there. So you can access them there as well. Thank you, Jana. That's very, very helpful. <clears throat> Any, would either of you like to add anything to that for, for to what Jana had to say? No. Okay, second question. Can I, can I make changes to the tool to fit the needs of my school district? I'm assuming that person means, you know, not changes to be on the website, but they take the tool and use it on their own. Can they change it? Is that is that something that Wallace would uh, permit? I believe so. I mean, we, we each went back and added to it. Jana, that may be something for you. Yeah, the beauty of design thinking is that it's iterative, and so that's what we want it to do. We want people to have the shell. These are the things that we felt were important. Take that, adapt it to your district, and use it in your district or in your school how you see fit. Yes. And if somebody comes up with a particularly interesting addition, can they share it back to the project somehow? Absolutely, and that's what we wanted. Um, that's what we saw as, as we were creating this. That was our vision that it would not just be something that a group of practitioners created and and said to people, "Here's the answer to everything," but really that it would be um, a resource where we could be collaborative. So this is what we have, but what are you using that may be able to help um, us in our work as well? So we want it to be interactive in that way. Great. Those are the only questions that have come in. I'm checking the question board again just to be sure. I don't see anything else. Um, if um, if anybody does have a question after the fact and they are looking for uh, a place to uh, get the answers to that question, uh, going to the NASSP website and um, following the links that Jana um, suggested will give you uh, places where you can uh, contact someone and try to get answers and um, let me go to the next slide. Um, I'd like to take the time to invite everyone to the 2018 National Principals Conference. Um, that will be taking place this year um, or next year rather for on July 11 through 13 in Chicago, Illinois and the SSP is the sponsor. You can learn more about the conference and register at the address that's shown on this slide that's on your screen now and that is www.principlesconference.org. Uh, presenters, I'd really like to, to thank you again um, and um, tell you that um, uh, we, I, I like the, the conversational uh, tone of today's webinar. It gives people a chance to talk. The fact that we had a couple of glitches is not new to any school people. We know that with any technology there will come glitches and so um, I was happy to see that we were able to cope with those and move on. And uh, Jana, thank you for your work uh, with the Wallace Foundation and NASSP. And uh, with that, I'll be signing off, unless anybody has any last words. OK. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. Thank you very much. With that, I'll end the webinar for today.